Welcome everybody to our talk, Malicious Fungible Tokens. My name is Mauro and my partner today is Sibel. Uh, we welcome you, thank you for choosing our talk. Hey everyone, good evening. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for being here to our talk. Uh, first, of course, English is not our first language. We have a little bit accent, so if you don't understand any word, please raise your hands or say you are saying so much bullshit in English. That's up. okay because we can uh, uh, speak, uh, improve our English, okay? Thank you. So let us start. As I said, my name is Sibel. I'm from Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil. I work with cyber threat intelligence and well, I like mowers. I like to research about mowers, handsomewares, and things like this. It's pretty cool, you know, I know how it works. Well, my name is Mauro. I'm a Uruguayan Argentinian hacker. I'm here today to show this talk. And I spoke at different events around the world, and I'm the leader of the Bitso Quetzal team, which is the first Latin American Web3 uh, threats research team. Uh, this talk, we are going to use NFTs as immortal control and common and common and control servers. We are not going to sell you any NFT. We are not going to try to put you into crypto. So we are not going to make you invest into anything. This talk is the continuation or the spiritual successor of everything is as it too if you are brave enough, which was a talk at the previous adversary village where we used the Spotify, World of Warcraft, Wikipedia, and whatever you can name as a situ server in the past. So. This, uh, this talk is 30 minutes only, but is divided in two parts, okay? First, I will give ingredients, and then, Mauro, you cook this, okay? First, let me introduce you Podo, or Leopoldo is his dog, amazing dog, a golden retriever, okay? Uh, so, let's talk, let's clarify what uh, NFT, NFT, C2 servers, and lovely golden retriever, the lovely dog. So, NFTs, um, basically they are uh, all information when you uh, upload, you know, uh, for an NFT in a blockchain. This is all information stored and, well, everything is there. Um, data, metadata, and things like that. But you can store this image as well and off-chain, I mean, in a decentralized um, it's a platform for this and, of course, uh, is immortal as well. You know, you can change like in, in, in blockchain. This is very important. So we have two types, you know, how we can store our, our image on chain and off chain, on blockchain and not in the blockchain. Oops, sorry, okay. Sorry, so what is a C2 command and control server? It's a server that uh, we can send and receive information of malware. So we can use this in everywhere, right? But not in this case. But the problem is if I try to do something in NFT, uh, if I use a regular server, you know, for C2, what can happen? Uh, he can be, this can be banned or uh, blacklisted, uh, you know, in the list that uh, denial lists or everything can be messy and can be taken down even if it's in Tor, in Tor browser. So, yeah, works, of course, but nah, for not in this case. This particular case, we need something more resilient, right? So, um, as I said, blockchain, I don't know, everybody's familiar fam, uh, familiar with blockchain, I guess, right? So everything is there, ba uh, back of the there is permanent. You can change. It's there and that's it. You just upload there and you keep there. Can ban it, can flag any, anything. But uh, usually NFTs can be stored there or no. Can be, uh, NFT is an image, uh, in NFT image, you can put like name, description, trade, and everything, including metadata is there, right? Uh, so instead we do this with that ugly monkeys. We, everybody saw that ugly monkeys are rare or weird image because we see weird images from artists that say, oh, this is brand new thing, but it's not my thing, sorry. Uh, what about Golden Retriever? They are really, really cool, and it's a dog. Too bad it's not a cat, but let's start with a dog. Maybe the next time, right? Maybe. Now, let's explain what is this. Um, mostly, 
NFTs, there's a platform, the most known one is OpenSea. That one with the ugly monkey uh, that was hacked several times, but it's not about this, this talk. Uh, this is a very big market, probably is whitelist for all, almost all Web3, you know, companies. All traffic go through this API. Okay, but there is oh, off-chain too. Uh, it's, par it's partially uh, it's stored in on chain, I mean in the blockchain, but the, the metadata is decentralized in other places, like this file system is in other places. Now, this is very important. When you use, we use the centralized metadata, where uh, can be in many, many places, but here specifically we will talk about interplanetary file system. Uh, I don't know if some uh, everybody is familiar with this. It's a cool place, you know, very uh, it's a decentralized platforms. It's like torrent, you know, when you try to download or upload a file and music there, you have seats, no? So these seats, everything is shared among these seats. And when you uh, you have these, you hold these files uh, and you, uh, you can share, you know, and hold these files, you have, you receive coins. I mean, you are were paid, you know, to have these files. This is really nice for who is, you know, who have this, this. You have this files, is a file coin, I guess, the name? Fine yes, coin. right? Uh, and then this image, when you upload there, uh, is converted in another kind of file, this AVIF. I'm not so familiar with this kind of, you know, I'm not an artist to convert images. And then the original file that's stored in this uh, decentralized place is highly distributed among the seats. And this is the thing, and you know, everything is in the seats, all, all these files. So uh, starting from here is the thing, you know, what we're talking about. Please explain what we do, we do with these files that are decentralized. Well, the point with type interplanetary file system is that it's used widely by Lockheed Martin, IBM, other high vendors. The point is that everything is distributed. Anyone can run an APFS node. So if you want to take something down, you have to ask every single node owner to take it down. But as my partner here said, OpenSea and some other platforms reward you for holding the file or sharing the file with Filecoin. So if you get a hold of a file, everybody deletes it and you have it, there's a supply demand problem here. You can make lots of money by being the last one, the last holder of that file. So that opens the path to certain kind of abuses of people not actually honoring takedown requests. Uh, okay, so now comes time part. This sounds pretty good in theory, but we have to make it into code, especially into Ruby code. So if any one of you knows Ruby, know that it might be nice, but it's not as flexible as other languages. So what we need right now, we need a malicious, um, a malicious situ server, a malware that can interpret and send commands from NFTs, and obviously the malicious NFTs. I'm going to switch the mic. Okay, I'm back here. So, for this experiment, we have Leopoldo, uh, we presented him uh, in the previous slides. We have four NFTs, which every single one does anything different, and we're going to test different attack vectors encoded inside these NFTs. We have Initial Access Barker, Ramson Retriever, Treat Actor, and Golden Locker, my personal favorite. It's not for sale. Okay, on the left you can see the malware, coded in Ruby called MFT, Malicious Fungible Tokens. And on the right side, you can see the C2 server, coded once again in Ruby and Sinatra. Let's start by exploring the most basic things in OpenSea. Let's start by exploiting the common fields, the low hanging fruit. Treat Actor, what actually does is has a description field, publicly viewable by anyone, it's visible to anyone, which is encoded in Base64 and Rod13. When decoded, it says IP address, which is always hard coded on all examples to local hosts, so you cannot do any damage to anyone else. Uh, it has a code parameter that it actually represents Unix command and actions, which are actually proprietary modules of the malware. And this is not detected by Cyberchef, even with magic on Dev 10. So that was pretty awesome for me. Then we have Golden Locker, 
which has a description just encoded in Basic64, which is not also discovered by uh, Cyberchef, and has other actions. We will see them in detail now. Here's the malware, and we will have a demo at the end of this talk. Um, when you search for an account, for an ENS domain name or an Ethereum account, it will list all NFTs, showing the newer ones first, because if you are pricing C2 servers, this one will have the latest information that you need, the most up-to-date information and comments. Then, if you can see the contract and the description and the collection. And then, here's the thing. If you see the description, you will see the encoded, um, the, the encoded payload. But if you see below, you will see the URL for the picture and the metadata. And then you will go to IPFS.io. And here you will say, Mauro, what happens if I send a takedown request to IPFS.io? Absolutely nothing, because IPFS.io is just an IPFS browser. All this information is stored on different IPSF nodes across the world. And you have to make a takedown request to every single one. Then, uh, if any one of you is uh, familiar with Terraform, actually Terraform has Terraform plan, which will show you what changes will happen before you push the button. So you can avoid something like, you know, CrowdStrike incident and things like that. So actually, I tried to implement that. It's a function I super, uh, I'm super in love with. So the malware will tell you what's going to happen once you run that NFT. Will the code and tell you step by step what's going to happen before you push the button. And then you will see it running in action as you can see here. It will say, okay, I'm using this server as, as a relay. I will run this custom code, who am I, which answers back with Mauro Eldridge ID, which answers back with my ID, hostname, and so on. There are some fake functions that I have not coded in, obviously, for obvious reasons, that are wipe, encrypt, and open a reverse shell. That won't work at all. And this is what the attacker will see from the Citrus server. We'll see all the answers, for example, new exfiltration from localhost, and everything that happens. But let's see how this works in the back. Before exploiting this, which is a super low-hanging fruit, we will try to do something more complex. Remember that my partner told that once you send a picture to an NFT, it will be stored in ABIF format and decentralize it. Well, the original file, the raw file, will be decentralized as well for no apparent reason. So that's where we can inject more shenanigans. On this case, I just wanted to test that steganography will work. So I put Mauro Eldridge was here. The method is the most simple method on steganography, less single bit or LSB, which has a hard-coded location that everyone knows. And then, if you see here, you have, once again, the picture URL and the metadata URL. Let's try to download the picture and check if the message made it to production on OpenSea. And for nobody's surprise, once downloaded and check it with setsteg, which is a third party tool I do not own, you can see the message replicated. This means that we can decentralize messages, steganographic messages across all the world abusing OpenSea. Why is this so important? Because the malware will only send traffic to OpenSea API. So when doing forensics on an affected device, you will see that the traffic and the attack comes from OpenSea, from nowhere else, just OpenSea. Wrong Wireshark, wrong TCP dam, you will see only connections to OpenSea API. And then I decided to create my, uh, let's say, my master artcraft, Initial Access Barker, which has all the attack vectors. It has uh, steganographic signet messages. It has a trait, which is a common field on all NFTs. But it also has something called EXIF uh, field. EXIF metadata is data that is usually put by machines, by your processors, by your cameras, by your phones. The point is, the trick here is that EXIF metadata, it's hard to just put any arbitrary value in, you know? You can put numbers, you have certain fields that are more flexible than others. But there's a field, a specific field called profile copyright that allows you to put basically anything you want without limit. And that's where it stores the payload as well. And once you check it, once you go to any IPFS IO, uh, sorry, IPFS browser, you will see that the trade is already distributed globally. 
So you, you can rely on the trade and not even start messing with metadata or messing with exit met, uh, metadata as well. But then I say, OK, let's try if we can check the other two vectors. Then loading the picture that you can see here, which is hosted on IPFS IO, um, you can see that by running Exif tool on the specific field, you will see once again the payload. Running setsteg will render once again the, uh, the payload. So this adds different layers of resilience to store the same or different payloads on a simple NFT. Remember that minting an NFT is something super absolutely cheap. So you can basically write sit immortal C2 servers for five pounds, seven dollars, or whatever it's in your currency. You can also check this with different third party tools I do not own to see that the payload is reflected. And now it's time to the demos. We are very good in time. The demos don't have sound, but you will enjoy my angel voice narrating it. This for example is, sorry, let's try to improve the quality because you deserve better. Give me a second. Basically, what we are going to do here, Mike. Okay. What we are going to do here is run uh, Golden Locker, one of the low hanging fruit exploitation. Above, you can see the malware, and below, you can see the C2 server. They are both running on the same machine in order to not damage anything. We'll try to decode the instructions. Uh, the network is not cooperating, but we will try to decode the instructions that are hosted on the malware. Give me a second. Which belongs to Golden Locker. They will then give us an action plan. Sorry about that. It will give us an action plan then. And what will happen? It will try to run who am I, ID, host name, and will try to uniquely identify the host and do some other shenanigans. Then we need to execute it. Sorry. Hackers with tech problems happens. Yeah, this happens from time to time, you know. We will try to run it again. The idea is to then exact it and see how the commands are reflected on the other server. Here it is trying to work. Give it some seconds. The quality is not the best, but let's try to bear with it. And then it tries to find a viable payload. If you see here, you will see that it says, I have found a tainted EXIF registry. I have found a tainted steganographic message that I can use. And if it, it will try to find the description first, it will try to then jump into something more complex each time in order to try to use the low-hanging fruit available first. Sorry, just. And then the idea, the final idea is that, as I said before, you will see all the traffic being reflected to OpenSea. That makes actually difficult for forensic teams to know where the tanks come from, but also it will help them in another way. Uh, if any of you is a defender or forensic analyst or similar, you will really appreciate the value of having uh, basically immortal C2 server because you will have an artifact that you can uh, dissect and check basically forever and use as, a, as an example forever. You won't have to rely on malware libraries and you won't have to rely on, you know, platforms that simulate attacks or malware. Well, since this is not cooperating, uh, I will move on. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's not easy. But we'll move on. Uh, and as in all crypto experiments, there's something that you cannot just be safe from and are scammers. As soon as we publish it, the pictures of my golden retriever, I have people trying to buy it for 15th, 20th, and so on. And let me tell you, it's not worth it. He showers once a month, so he, he smells like a seal. It's not worth it. And then, uh, going back to the serious track, as I was discovering this and reporting these issues with IPFSIO, 
I started seeing some ads, promoted ads on Twitter. I, I refuse to call it X. Um, if you look at the lower left corner of the post on the left, you will see that the source address is IPFSIO. Somebody is hosting a drainer campaign, a phishing campaign, on IPFSIO, rendering it basically immortal, unable to be taken down. So it has a, let's see, rent-free web server to host the campaign forever. Those are the dangers of uh, decentralization when it's weaponized. And then, so I hope you enjoyed this talk. It's time to say goodbye. Uh, I know that you may have questions. Uh, this talk is not exactly about NFTs or blockchain in general, but rather the whole time abusing it. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for the demo not working. I apologize, heartfelt. And well, thanks for coming. Thanks for your time. Uh, I really enjoy your company today. You can contact us here. Thank you, everyone. Any questions, comments, or something like this? The dog is not for sale. Did you release the tool? Yeah, the tool is released. You can actually create your own MetaMask address, jump to OpenSea, and start filling with it. Feel free to fork it, change it, your call. Someone else? Questions? Comments? No? So, uh, a quick advertisement. Uh, we are holding a new village here. Uh, it's La Villa Hacker. It's more folks than la people who speak Spanish and Portuguese. We have awesome talks, all in Spanish and Portuguese. If you want to visit us, it would be awesome. And thank you very much, guys. Thank you.